Now it's quiet. Okay. Uh, so please introduce yourself in the beginning. Hi Magda, my name is Donna Caldwell and I'm the owner of Happy Tales to You Dog Training and Canine Corral Dog Daycare. How long have you been, um, you know, an owner of this facility? Uh, I have been dog training without this facility since 1994, so I'm getting close to the 20 year mark. We've been open for daycare about 10 years and then we expanded into doing boarding. So during the holidays we're going to have some dogs spending Christmas with us, so we're going to have a little doggy Christmas party while they're here. <laughs> oh, how, how, how does it look? Your doggy Christmas party. Well, we're gonna have. We're, I, I don't know. What have we done in the past with them before? We don't. But some dogs they are bringing some. Uh, some people they, they are bringing presents, presents for dogs. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> no, no, some no, dogs bring their presents uh, when they come here, and then we will probably have a staff party, and the dogs will probably enjoy some being out time with us while we're here. So do you see more dogs here during holidays? Yes, I do. Uh, it's interesting because our daily dogs that we normally have for daycare, we don't see possibly as much, but the people who take off for the holidays, they do leave their dogs here. And so when we tend to get, this is our busiest time of year. Do you see dog missing their owners? Oh. You know, longer periods of no. time? I think they enjoy their stay here with us. Um, and a policy that I want the dogs to be familiar with us and so they're required to come stay with us for the day a, a few times before they're allowed to stay for the boarding because I do think it will stress them out if they are just left here for a few weeks and they don't even know who we are. So we have the dogs come for daycare, visit with us a few times, they get to know what the protocol is and they get to understand the structure of our place because the owners can't really explain it to them on the way over in the car. The dogs have to be dropped off so for them to figure, yeah, to figure it out and so that's what we try to do here. It alleviates the stress. Uh, what about you? Do you have a dog or there's so many animals here that you just, you know, I, I illegally in my house, don't, don't say that. Uh, I have four dogs in my house and I, I, my thing that I like to do with them is Christmas is I will wrap their gifts for them and I let them tear off the paper and they then I'll put a little goodie on the inside so they get to open up their own gifts at Christmas. What do Americans buy for Christmas for Oh them? my lord. What, what do you see? What, what trends do you see? I see clothes, toys, like all the things they would buy for their children is what they buy for their dogs, which, which is wonderful. It's nice. I think that uh, the dogs here are treated like children, and this is the holiday time where we do give, they do give, we and I, we, everybody gives gifts, and I see that the dogs get equally as spoiled, I will say, as some children do, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But it, it's really interesting uh, how, how close the, the dogs are with the families and how they're treated as such. So it's very nice to see. So do they have like special Christmas clothes? Do they produce something like special Christmas clothes or Christmas collars? Or oh, absolutely. They do collars. They do leashes. They have blinking light collars. They have all kinds of goodies that they have. Um, when it gets colder, they do buy the holiday jackets for them. The dogs are wearing clothes when they're leaving. Uh, <laughs> my staff is noted for doing that as well. And, and a lot of dogs do need to have a little bit of extra cushioning, you know, because they're, they don't have a lot of fur and the weather's cold. But it is just funny because they look like humans wear Christmas sweaters, those hideous Christmas sweaters that humans wear. They have the same thing for their dogs, which I think is very Do you see a trend now as for breeds? There was a time in the United States when, you know, like Dalmatians were really hugely popular, right? Then it, of course, subsided because the movie um, went out of cinemas. Uh, the breed turned out to be quite difficult, not so easy to train. So do you see trends like these right now? Uh, yes, especially when Obama became president, they got the Portuguese water dogs and then we just had a burst of people coming in with Portuguese water dogs for training and for daycare. 
Uh, in California here specifically, uh, we tend to see more pit bulls and chihuahuas. In, in San Jose where we are, in the outskirts, they, they see a little bit more herding dogs. Uh, but a lot of them are either a very big protection breed or a very small pocket dog is, are the, the trends that we see normally. If you go to the shelters, you'll see pit bulls, chihuahuas, pit bulls, chihuahuas, and a lot of things are referred to as lab mixes if they can't really identify specifically. What the dog is. What about this idea that it's completely unknown in Poland to give a pack as a Christmas gift? Is it still going on here? Not yes, so and, and I am not a fan of that. Children are not ready to be parents, and that's pretty much what you're doing. You're, you're, when you bring a puppy into the house, you're bringing another child, as far as I'm concerned. And so the novelty of it wears off for the children after a time period, and I, I don't think it's necessarily the best gift unless the whole family is committed and they're ready. But just to do it as an impulse buy, I think, is a very bad idea. And I, not a big fan of that at all. Uh, because sometimes the dogs end up in shelters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and don't get me wrong, I don't think any human being ever gets a dog or a puppy with the intention of surrendering it later. But I do think that they have a very romantic notion of what it is to get a dog, and they see the Lassie movies, and they see these movies that indicate these wonderful dogs that are going to sit by the fireplace and then bring them their slippers. And then you have this little dog that's chewing the sheet rock and ripping up the carpet and going potty. And so their romantic notion is you know, it, it's, it's shattered. And then they realize they're in over their head. And then they realize that this wasn't the best choice. And then the dogs end up going down to the shelter because they really understand that they don't have time. And I think it's very, it's a very difficult lesson for them. And that's why I don't like puppies getting gifted for Christmas. Uh, because it really is a big commitment. We have more dog trainers now than we ever have, and we have more problems than we've ever had in the United States. And I'm assuming it's in other countries as well. There's a very famous dog trainer named John Rogerson, who's from England, and he says that he sees that trend in Europe as well. And I do think it's because we want to treat our dogs as children, and yet, this, and they want the dogs to be happy, and for some reason they equate that with no structure, and lack of impulse control management, and it becomes a problem. So what kinds of problems do you encounter? Like aggression or just not listening is a big one. Uh, putting, you know, anything that would indicate that the dog is, and I'm going to say it this way, blowing off the owners. And what I mean by that is the dog. Spoiled. Yeah, and just understanding that you know, I get the call that the dog. I get the call that the dog isn't listening, and it's because the dog is not required to. And so, the communication with the humans, with the dogs, you know, they think talking to the dog or or yelling at the dog is the way to do it, and dogs don't understand that form of communication. So it's very important that the owners educate themselves on what to do, and and it just becomes worse if they don't. Get the